Friday live stream. Andre, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Great to see you all. Hi, everyone in the chat. I saw someone is joining the live stream for the first time ever after 10 years of listening. That's cool. Welcome, Hello. welcome. Very good. Where have you been? We also yeah. have a Wednesday afternoon live stream, by the way. That's wow. true, which all is right. a secret yeah. one, sort of, but it's becoming uh, popular. But I'm working. I can't watch that. Sure is can. it a Patreon live work. stream? No, it's what we used to do. We would do TikToks live. Oh. And so now we've expanded it to TikToks live and YouTube, Facebook, Twitch. Awesome. So Nice. I'm ready for a 24-hour SGU live cam myself. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there when you're ready. Um, yeah. Back. That's a Patreon level. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Enough Just a one day. Security cameras. Well, for one day. Anyway. Not a all day round. Kara is dreading. That patron who signs up and, and, and ticks that ticks the meter to that point where we're, where we're committed. Oh my gosh, that'll Gee. be fun. Twenty four hours is nothing. Come on, please <laughs> get that done in a day. I wouldn't even need to take much of a nap. Why so I apparently, Andrea. Yes. You're you're a, a, an expert in politics. So you have to explain all this to everybody. Uh oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Explain not. it. The two things. Is seven. Two things. Let's go. Number one, you have to in the next hour you have to fix democracy. Oh. But before we get there, um, we have to point out that the Republicans are extremely upset that the Congress did the absolute minimum job of keeping the government open mm -hmm. for at least a little while longer. They're very right. upset about that. Right. That's because they're no longer in the business of governance. They're mm. in the business of clickbait and rage bait and, and attention and so on, I would say. <clears throat> it seems that way. Yeah. They're going to get rid of their, well, their, you know, Marjorie yeah. Taylor Greene is threatening to get rid of the speaker, Mike Johnson, because he betrayed Republicans in passing a spending bill. Yeah. No, it's I don't insanity. know anything about no. history, but... Uh, this has got to be the most tumultuous Speaker of the House series there's ever been. Yeah. Right? I mean, we normally I have one and kind of move on. Yeah. No, I was just actually talking to a friend of mine who's a professor of government at, um, at Georgetown, and he literally was saying, he was like, parties do two things. One is they run for election and they build consensus and they get people to agree on a platform and all that kind of stuff. And then two is they govern, yeah. like they negotiate and they compromise. Yeah. And they try to work with the party anyway he was like basically they've completely forgotten it well, and you forgot about the third thing what's that they they try to get money from people right right that's through they fundraise out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like on the phone like they got to be in a special building and making calls and trying to get money that's like a something they have to do they're for, <laughs> like they're forced to do it aren't they wasn't that on john oliver are they really is that actually i mean the the they're like people behind the with whips keep them going right right keep right talking I mean, I get some, <laughs> uh, some layer of hellscape. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. I'm not religious, but if you go to hell, you have to do uh, campaigning on behalf of the DNC or the RNC. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you all, but I, uh, I'm i getting a lot of those and I'm getting them from both parties. And I'm not sure what that says about me. Mm -hmm. um, but when it means your information is being sold, yeah. Is yeah, that's what it means. I mean, it's really because it happens to me too. And I have no idea how they get my name and number of what. How did I wind up on a list in which they're, in which I'm getting texts from all over the place? Have yeah. you ever donated to anybody? No. 
I have. I would oh. definitely do it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That puts you. On God the forbid list. you donate a dollar to anybody, then suddenly that's it. You're a target. No, every year I give in, and I, you know, I think, oh, we could be putting money towards something so much better, blah blah blah. But they get to me in the end. Um, but I always donate to one party that I'll let you all guess which party that is. Uh, I'm a huge the Wigs. Green fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Wigs. Yeah. Bring yeah. back yeah. the Wigs. I'm a Wig. Uh, but no, they're all they're all coming at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I donated for the first time in 2016 for obvious reasons. Right. And ever since then, here come the texts and the emails. Motivation. Yeah. Yep. Both both sides. Yeah. Like yep. You've been sold. I, my favorite ones are the ones that come after you. And there is actually a lot of research around like the emotional manipulation and what gets you to react. So anger is one of the biggest things to get you to click and react. And that's social media. That's anywhere. But I really am a fan of the ones that are, are guilt inducing. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're getting those where they're just like, you've, you've personally let me down. And we oh, were really yes. counting on you. I'm getting some like real. Oh my god! My mother is writing these. <laughs> shame, shame email. Yeah, yeah. No, that that might. Be. Oh, that that Does that, that work? That that could be effectual. Like in certain people, in certain groups of people, I could absolutely see that working. No doubt about it. I mean, in, in my n of one uh, and my own. Uh, I think sense of inherent guilt for existing, it does not work and I unsubscribe, mm -hmm. but, uh, but it must, or they wouldn't be doing it. Or maybe I'm part of some kind of AB testing in real mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't underestimate the power of shame. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, and guilt. Yeah. You know, I, I look, isn't Jewish, the entire Jewish culture Jewish on people? That? Carry <laughs> it, but, there are, but no, but I've, I've also talked to other people of other cultures and, you know, um, there's a lot of guilt in Catholic. Yeah, well. there's a lot of Catholic guilt out there. Oh, yeah. And, and, people, and it that does work. I mean, this, the psychology behind it is fascinating. Mm -hmm. You should be ashamed to be yourself. Yeah. You should have normal human feelings and emotions. Right. So give us your money. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then wash away those. <laughs> <things>. <laughs> I mean, speaking of shame, we don't have to go down this road at all, but I uh, am currently today feeling shame because I was totally in the like Kate Middleton is being hidden. Yeah. William and Kate are breaking up, blah, blah, blah. Like that just dropped. Yeah. From a distance. But, uh, but then yeah. I watched your video and I felt a lot of shame for even engaging in videos that speculated about her whereabouts. We <laughs> talked about it on oh, the stream. Yeah. She, it's it terrible. Out, she has terrible. like stomach cancer, or does they say? Well, Ka Ka Catherine has stomach cancer. Right. Yeah. That's. Yeah. And she, yeah. Just leave Favorite. these people alone. I, I mean, know. How it's, shallow was oh your gosh. life that you are obsessed about these random people who happen to be royalty? Right. I mean, I just I don't. Yes. That's I know that that's their version of celebrity culture, but yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. I, it there's nothing that could make me give a rat's ass about any of these people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fact that it all, you know, people are saying that it basically bullied her into while sick, while recovering, <coughs> while dealing with her yeah. life and her family and her health, to make a video that says, you know, everyone stop speculating, please give me privacy. It's just, uh, the whole thing is very sad. And yeah, it's like, what's wrong with the rest of us? We don't have better things to think about. We don't mm -hmm. have our own business to focus on. It's, it's uh, grim, so. Well, how bad is it? I mean, do we know enough details to say she's no. screwed now? Or, I mean, stomach cancer is ten. I don't, I've never heard of a very good outcome of stomach cancer. Well, apparently she had abdominal surgery, right? And they found presence of cancer, and then she's doing preemptive chemo. Is that the? So that's what she said. said. Yeah. Said, so who knows? Yeah. Well, what there are stages, right? Stage is that how the cancer system works? If you catch it at one, it's <clears throat> your the lower the number, the better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you definitely you know it, it, that's the stage of the cancer is how far it has spread, basically. Right, you never mm -hmm. want it to be four, which mm -hmm. is like metastatic. Yeah, is there a five? I never heard five. Dead? Yeah, never heard <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes what? they do like four A, four B. You know, like they get little. Uh. Yeah. They get more detailed, but you never want to hear the number four with cancer. No. Mm. And then your doctor tries to be like, well, at least it's four A instead of four B. And you're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> you got four extra days. My aunt, Steve, I'm curious about this. I'm sure you've talked about this on the show. My aunt was diagnosed with breast cancer about 10 years ago. She's fine. And she was diagnosed with stage <clears throat> zero, which mm -hmm. to me felt Ooh. like oh. maybe not cancer, or is it the we're trying so hard to prevent that we're intervening? 
anticipatory. Yeah, that must be. It must be. I've never heard stage zero either. It must oh, be okay. pre-cancer, like. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Pre-cancerous cells or something. Yeah. It says can uh, abnormal cells that look like cancer cells. Oh, yeah, but not, not uh. full cancer. They're only mostly cancer. Only mostly, right? <laughs> so are we all? If we don't have cancer, we're all in that. We're all stage zero. Yeah. Stage zero, or even <laughs> minus one. If you're just like, <laughs> I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess you want to be minus one. Then zero yeah. isn't good enough. So, yeah. Steve, were people suffering? Have people for I don't know, 50,000, 50, 80,000 years have they been dying from cancer all this time? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so a it's myth. not some more current phenomenon in that is a myth. evolution. That's that I thought it was 5G, but okay. That is, I've that heard, is, that. I've yeah. heard it's that. It's propagated by you know alternative medicine gurus to make it seem like cancer is a disease of modern life. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that's been increasing the cancer frequency in the population is old that age. we're living older. That's it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a disease of old age where if the longer you live, the more likely you are to get it. That's pretty much it. No, I'm not saying there aren't risk factors. I'm just saying, like, societal level. The, this idea that, um, you know, ancient cultures, whatever, didn't get cancer is just wrong. In fact, there are mummies mm. with cancer, right? We, you can go back and look at, you know, the uh, samples of people, you know, from whatever, from archaeological digs, and they have cancer pretty much at the same rate. You know, it's, you know, it's, just, it's a complete myth. And, and which animals don't have cancer? None. <laughs> None. Well, I think the no mole, one? the mole rat. Yeah. Or oh, is it the mole rat? Yeah, I think they're they're for Good whatever for reason they're pretty. Have we seized on that yet to figure out? Why it, it, it includes the naked mole rat, blind mole rat, yeah. elephant apparently. Elephant? They're cancer resistant, extremely. It's mm. rare. They mole rarely get whale. cancer. Mm. It's because we haven't started feeding them. We gotta Interesting. Them them. Right. GMOs, I think. Yeah, yeah. The idea that yeah. sharks don't get cancer is a myth. Mm -hmm. Right. That was ah. promoting the shark cartilage. Right. Uh, snake yeah, oil. Take, grind up your shark and eat it and you won't. Because they don't get yeah, cancer. Yeah. cancer. Yeah. It's also that, amazing that even if they don't get cancer, what is it about eating their cartilage that would somehow just, make us? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's right. <laughs> it's it's magic. Cancer. Yeah. That's the very, magic. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, In bad. fact, Sharks get cancer of the cartilage. <laughs> Oops. Oh, sorry. I don't need to laugh. Yeah. Car cancer sharks, There's, but oh my gosh, that is ironic. We're going to hear news of a new spreading human cartilage cancer. Can humans get cancer in cartilage? Probably. You can probably get cancer everywhere. You can get cancer pretty much anything, yeah. Oh, that's great. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting, the whole the evolutionary you know, a response to cancer is interesting because, you know, that's what really limits a lot of biological processes. Like you may mm -hmm. wonder, like, why can't we just regrow arms, you know, like lizards do or whatever? Why can't we just infinitely regenerate our tissue? And that's because you would basically become a giant cancer if that were the case. Mm. So evolution strikes this bargain between being able to heal and regenerate and rejuvenate and live long without generating too much cancer. So we're basically living on the edge of what our immune system could handle. Mm. Right. It's like evolution has pretty much already struck an optimal bargain with all of those things. So anything which increases your ability to regenerate or rejuvenate or anything by necessity is increasing your risk of cancer. Right. Right. And probably, away from the optimal balance, which evolution has already struck. Right. Right. That's the big limiting factor with stem cells. Why we can't just say, oh, why don't we just inject stem cells into your brain after a stroke and grow mm -hmm. new brain cells? <laughs> we can do that. It'll also grow brain cancer. Mm. And that's a tough problem. And we haven't cracked it. You know, that's the reason why we're not flush with stem cells to begin with, because they also like to become cancers. Yeah. So. We're working on it, and we can't obviously use stem cells in limited ways. But it's not like we can't just regrow whatever because we'll get there. That's it. But it's a that's the tricky problem. So it's an engineering. Out. It's an en it's a problem that can be solved through medical engineering. I mean, it's a biological. I mean, obviously the mole sure. rat did it. The naked mole rat figured out something, some way to do it. I mean, yeah. yeah. But it's not easy because if it were, evolution would have done it already. Well, right, uh, right. Isn't that right. the point? Do yeah. lizards get a lot more cancer because and other animals that can regrow, or is it? not measured in that way <clears throat> that's a good question i don't know um if there's if they've been able to directly link those two things together yeah um usually like they've evolved ways of of surviving you know of uh they're 
they like simplify their DNA or whatever. They do something mm-hmm. to reduce their cancer risk so that they can yeah. tra- have a trade off of increased rejuvenation. Hmm. Um, our, the big problem with humans is our brains, you know, say that again, because we, <laughs> I mean, the problem is like, we, you know, like there are animals. What's that animal that completely regenerates? Medusa? Itself? It's like, yeah, you could do that if you don't care if your brain survives from one iteration to the next, you know, I mean, like you, you can grow a new brain, mm. but if we grew a new brain, it wouldn't be you. It'd just be another person. <laughs> right. I used to say it wouldn't yeah. be better. With, but sure. Yeah. Yeah. Bob, what is that? That's very cartoony. That's interesting. This yeah. is a this is a weapon from a ki- the Killer Clowns movie. Oh yeah. Careful. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It is very clownish. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. It is cool. Five animals that can regenerate: the Mexican tetra, salamander, axolotl, axolotl, starfish, axolotl, axolotl yeah, sea cucumber. Sea cucumber. cucumber. Good for them. They don't get a lot of credit, I think. No, not enough. You know I mean? Yeah. In the Dune series, they had the axolotl tanks, which is where they grew yes. their tissue. But That's then in the prequels, they revealed that they're actually not growing organs to transplant. They're just harvesting them from slaves. <laughs> <laughs> There's a plot twist for you. No, boy. Yeah. Have you seen Dune 2? Have you already talked about this on the show? Oh, we haven't talked about it on the show. Oh, okay. Which one? Uh, we oh, did Dune see. Two? You, did you see it, Evan? We no, saw I it. haven't, but go ahead. You know, I, I, I mean, it's not like it, the book's for whatever, 50 years old. The movie, it's the same movie as the, the previous yeah. one in terms of the plot, you know. Yeah. Um, with obviously a lot of detailed difference. It was very good. I thought it yeah. was epic, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, the two movies together, I thought, were, you know, are, is the best um, film adaptation of, mm. it, of Dune mm-hmm. that I've seen, you there know, you and, and that's one of if not my favorite science fiction book series i think it's the best science fiction literature you know what i mean like if you look at like mm-hmm. is there any good actual literature in science fiction dune i think is at or near the top of the list hmm. and did you um, see how, how many rejections herbert got over the over the years yes i mean like 25 saying that saying like after the after 100 <laughs> is people are frustrated reading it and it's just like they <laughs> oh my god why? Was a, well, I guess Have was you ever read time. David Copperfield? I mean, it's yeah. A, <laughs> oh, it's a slog. <laughs> yeah, it's a sign of true literature. Are so I I haven't read them. I have the the main book, and I was looking up like how many <clears throat> are there, and there's a bunch, a whole bunch. But yeah. a lot of, are the ones that were like commissioned by his son. Any good? Those? Yeah, they're not people? as they're I not enjoyed. as good as the fathers. Okay. Because yeah, Frank, Frank Herbert, I thought was just a fantastic writer. He was also mm. very skeptical and very scientific. Yeah, he was. He, there's a lot of good critical thinking in his writing, and then his son partnered with another uh, science fiction writer, mm. which I think which tells me he was just there for the name, and the other science fiction writer was the science fiction writer. Right, and it definitely completed the the story like bringing it back around with prequels mm-hmm. um and they were solid science fiction but they weren't frank yeah. Herbert's doom they just right. were not mm-hmm. as good as the, they were fun yeah they were fun i think tim curry may have n- narrated some of them and he, of course he you know is an amazing narrator i'd recommend yeah him reading the telephone book but the the, the latest dune <laughs> movies are just fantastic cinema right they yeah. are you know the the visually stunning, beautiful. You know, you know very artistic. The edit, the directing and acting is fantastic. Yeah, watch it in IMAX. Uh, and the sound work. It's I did over the weekend. Movie. It was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Saw it yeah. IMAX. Yeah, or I saw it. I guess not IMAX. I saw it in RFX. Okay, whatever. It's a big screen. A big you got to watch it on the big screen. Whatever. Yeah. 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 No, I am. Somebody asked, "Are you watching the three body problem?" I am watching the three body problem. How is that? What is that? What is that? It's. uh, I've only watched a couple of episodes. It's another. It's another one of these series where it's like it's a big mystery. Nobody knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's some (laughs) there's some supernatural metaphysical mystery going on, and uh, you know, so I'm right at the very beginning of that. But it's good so far. I'm really enjoying Constellation. Mm. You guys seen that? It's another sci-fi series and it's good it's um you know about astronauts uh in the um international space station although Mm. most of it it, it takes place on earth but something happens 
and there's some kind of interdimensional universes overlapping. It's all like quantum physics, you know, two things could be in the same place at the same time hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, but it's interesting. It's a little bit hard. Like you almost need a cheat sheet to keep track of like, all right, which universe are they from? Oh and yeah. Who is, you know, you have to keep track of because it's, there's two different timelines that are yeah. weaving back and forth mm. and they do a good job of giving you a lot of clues so you can keep track of it. But even still, it, it could be a little challenging. Like a character yeah. has bangs in one and not the other, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. 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 They do Always things that, yeah, yeah, they do yeah. things to like, to make you know, like how they tie together and who, who right. which one you're dealing with and which universe you're in. But, um, right. but it's still, it's so easy to get confused. Every now and then, like my wife, I will pause like, all right, now. Which one is she? Is she the one from the, the original <laughs> universe? You know, we have yeah. to sort of reorient each other to what's going on. That reminds me of, I don't know if, if any of you have seen the show Dark. It's a German show. Yeah. A time travel. And yeah. then yeah, it's good. same thing. We'd have to pause and be like, where are we? What's yeah, happening? Yeah. Like, who are these people? <laughs> He's his own father? Ah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's wild. But the, the three body problems. So I haven't seen the show. Have you read the books? No. Oh. I've only read the first book and it's awesome. It's one of okay. my favorite um, books of, of recent, you know, that mm -hmm. hasn't come out 50 years ago. And um, I haven't seen the other two. So I'm hesitant to watch the show until I read the other two. I don't quite know. Maybe season one doesn't go past the first book. So yeah, I didn't read the book. So yeah. I know it's it's an amazing book. Yeah. Yeah. I know the, the uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm hooked. You know, I'm, yeah. I definitely like the plot line. And okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm watching uh, For All Mankind right now. I think I'm on season mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. if you guys have seen that. I'm, I'm up to date on that. Yeah. 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 Very good. We have talked about that before. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. You know the alternate uh, history of what would what would happen if the Soviet Union beat the U.S. to the moon, mm -hmm. and uh, that is a fascinating thought experiment. Um, and you know, basically, it keeps the space race going. Yeah. Basically, so far, forever. You know. Um, and, and which I think, yeah, you know, I think they overcall it a little bit. It's yeah, I yeah think, probably, but oh, I, I think that the investment and like the like we, you know, we we keep going to the moon and we build the moon, but all that makes sense. Having fusion reactors mm -hmm. in the 90s, no, that would yeah. not have 90s, uh, yeah. Yeah. no. That that's where they went off the rails, I think, a little bit there. But yeah. in terms of, <laughs> terms of the technology, but I think just in terms of, well, it's always fascinating to watch an alternate history. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's the same thing with the constellation. It's like because in one of the universes, actually, I think in both of these universes, there's like alternate Apollo histories. Mm -hmm. There's neither of them are our history, right? But, but they are different. <laughs> they are also different from each other. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, early on for 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 all mankind, I imagine this. I tried to map it to actual Apollo number yeah. missions, and then I was like, I'm actually making this more confusing for myself. Yeah. I have to just give up on on reality. <laughs> Here's a futuristic question for you uh, mm. to change uh, slightly change the subject, maybe a lot. But are you all following the pig transplant yesterday? No. no. Your your mm -hmm. point about nuclear fusion and would it be possible made me think of it. Apparently, they. I'm going to get the organ wrong, but apparently they successfully transferred a pig's liver to a human. It was in the New York Times. To a human. Yeah. And so everyone's very excited that Wait, not everyone, the, but a lot they of grew a human liver inside a kidney. pig and transferred it? Kidney. Oh, kidney. 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 So kidney they transplant. Is it's it a, a genetically modified kidney? pig yes. kidney. Yep. So okay. they must have humanized it. Humanized. Like a crisp yeah, bird and pig kidney. Yeah, and the host accepted kidney. it and it was all good? Well, it was yesterday, right? So, so far, so good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that is the of all the things that we're working on to replace just ordinary organ transplantation. I think that's the one with the most potential is yeah. humanized animal organs. Yeah. Why? Well, what are the other options? I think we have like one option is growing them. 3D just, printing. You know, 3D <laughs> printing jar. them, you know, Paper to, machine. To, to 3D print them. You need mechanical you need, analogs. You need like a denuded. Uh, uh, Ooh, scaffold, and then you put the you print like the stem cells on there and everything. It's just, eh, it's just not. We're so far away from that. Or just growing like a whole organ in, outside of a body, mm -hmm. or like a, you know, like attaching an ear to a mouse. It's like okay, but that like if you for organs, that's not going to be. I think we're we're nowhere near that. Um, but you know, just genetically modifying a pig so that they have a human immune system and human you know proteins. And then you just take the pig 
organs and put them into a human and it's like a uh, it's like transplanting human organs in but not only could you make can you humanize you can use you know crispr and genetic modification to humanize the uh the pig organs you can also make them so that they don't reject it yes. you know I mean? yeah the rejection would That's be yeah. the main yeah. thing right yeah, like you just you, like it's even like oh, better than a human to human transplant. Mm. In fact, uh, because you know you could do the same thing with a human, but um, you can't ethically do that. You can't. No, St Steve, if I needed a human kidney transplant, yeah. would I have to find a donor of my same blood type? Oh, definitely. The same blood type is like that. just the so beginning. Therefore, what these pigs have the same blood type? I need or they just have a neutral pig. blood type. That's what I'm saying. It's just like you don't. They don't have any. Protein to really yeah. react to, mm. so um, there. I forget what they call that, but there's a term for that. So it's like you humanize them, and then you also make it so that they're not immunogenic and Im immunogenic. Sort so of that, like de-allergize them. Yeah, right? yeah. So mm. um, yeah, th I think that's our shortest path to like massively growing, uh, growing organs. The best transplant would be to clone yourself and mm. then get a right get harvest a your own transplant from your own clone, like on that stupid movie. The was it the island? Um, but uh, yeah, but that's not going to happen either anytime soon for obvious ethical reasons. I think even if that's imagine all right, so imagine if you could make a clone of yourself that doesn't have a brain, yeah, decephalize it or something, yeah, just right? an anencephalic. I personally think that would be fine. Of course. But, but that would never happen. That would right. never fly. It's like, don't open that yeah. closet. Like, yeah. 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 Don't take the box <laughs> off of the, where the head would Why, be. Steve? There's just no brain. I, I just don't think it's going to happen ethically. You, you don't the think public would not accept it. The public Where's the ethical it. problem if there's I don't think there is one. I just don't oh, think here we go. go. I yeah. it's acceptable to the general public. Yeah. They, right. they bring up some... Where, where else complicated you bank bodily autonomy. Yeah, question. where else are you going to bank your organs other than another person? Isn't that the best place to have an organ? Yeah, bank? Yeah, yeah. Like when you're 20, you make a clone of yourself. I right. Like that. By the time you're 40, you have a 20 year old clone. Oh, that's weird. And then spare you know, parts, man. Yeah, it's just spare parts, and then there you go. I mean, the plastic surgery facelift world will go wild because mm -hmm. you no longer have to pay for all this. You just. <laughs> Peel on the fresh one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can't have I've been having this one in the freezer. Uh, I have no head. I mean, an internal no organ is one thing, but an external <laughs> kind of feature, that might be something else. It's a bit waterlogged, but you can have it. All right. the, the, the best, I think, biological pathway. Now we're talking about like not today and not in any time soon, but just if we had <laughs> unlimited technology. future technology, just like what's technologically, what would be, um, would be, um, so imagine if, like you enter a type of chrysalis and you basically grow a new body around your brain. Like your brain stays okay. intact, but you essentially grow a new body. Like mm -hmm. your old body turns into goo and then just becomes raw material for an entirely new body to form. Okay. So There's you got all Alzheimer's in a 20 year old body. Yeah. So you have, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah but again, the, the ultimate, um, the ultimate limitation is our is the brain, right? Because you can't do that with the brain, otherwise it's not you. Right. Um, so that's why we have to figure out how to keep the brain going for as long as possible. But that's where we get to um you Just digitize it. Yeah, you have to you have to have uh imp the brain yeah, of no, you don't you don't digitize it, you just you stimulate you, it. You interface it with a digital computer. And then over to, so that you have a hybrid biological mm -hmm. hybrid. silicon brain, it's a hybrid. And then over time, you know, the the biological contribution to your overall mind gets less and less and less and less and less until it becomes basically irrelevant. Right. And then and you're you, just a you are then you are a robot brain in a and then you can what? just Mouth. then you can re-sleeve, right? Then you get to the, the altered carbon where you're just wearing bodies as a right. sleeve, but you are the, a computer brain. Yeah, there's oh, yeah. multiple ways to do it. I mean, you could you could slowly transition the brain, you know, neuron by neuron. I don't think that's a way to do it. I just you, think you it's and I disagree on that. <laughs> no, Steve, I'm just Steve. That method you mentioned is fine, but there's other there's other ways. I mean, yeah, but I think every other way breaks continuity. I think it's the way I described it. The only way that doesn't break <laughs> continuity. How, how are you breaking <laughs> continuity when you're having one neuron at a time changed into a into a hearty? you know, siliconized, you know, neuron. 
That's there, there's no continuity problems with that. A slow that, morphosis of the brain. Yeah, it's just a slow discontinuation of continuity. But I think uh, really? that's also just well, not practical. Be a little How, weird. You're gonna take one neuron out and replace it with an artificial neuron with a with a million connections. It just makes no sense. No, you, you would have to inject something that would that would slowly morph, you know, dozens of neurons at a time or whatever into their hard, hardier, you know, analogs. And you would, there would be no continuity issue. But basically, if you, at the end of the day, then you're doing what I said, just right. in a different way. Well, that's what so, I'm saying. There's different ways to, to, to achieve but, the same result. But the point is you still have to be slowly morphing into... Yes, that's but key. It's, but it's, but I, my see, HMO I, cover this? I think so. <laughs> there, I, okay, at least. The, the difference is I wouldn't <laughs> take bucks. away any of the <laughs> biological brain until you're already massively interfacing with the non-biological brain, right? Yeah, that's the difference. I, don't, I wouldn't just move from one to the other. You you got to have that prolonged period where you are both. Right. Both. No, that, I'm going to just pretend this conversation is real news. And, this and you know, you know <laughs> how, that would be awesome. You know how to test Bob with my scenario? When, oh, here we go. Um, when ready. you have sufficiently like your your cognitive existence is sufficiently moved over to the switch it off and on, room. off and on. Can you tell the difference? Or, you tell the difference. Or no, you go to sleep. Uh oh. When you go to sleep, if it doesn't make any difference, you put basically put your biological brain to sleep. Mm. And if you don't notice the difference, like, well, okay, you're mostly your computer brain. Then. Mm. Yeah. Obviously, huh. you you if you turn the computer brain off, that should make a massive difference. Otherwise, you're nowhere near where you want to be. Right. It's got to do the other way. You got to turn the got to turn the biological brain off. So at some point, going yeah, to sleep will not matter. Brain. Yeah. The going to going to sleep will not matter anymore. It'll, it'll you won't notice it. Like that, that the meat part of your brain isn't functioning. Does it matter? This does relate to some news, actually, because uh, <laughs> oh, we're getting <laughs> neurological conditions now leading cause of ill health worldwide. Wow! Mm -hmm. Oh, I blame Steve. Steve, Neuro Steve. neurologists are very important. We yeah, should be paid happy. twice as much as <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. I well, sound like they're drumming up fear. Is what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You work for big neuro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steve, I am this... big neuro. Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, your head. Yeah. Is this them just recategorizing things or people just worse off? I think more diagnose more Di wider range of diagnosis. Yeah. I think it's just it's, again, it's aging population. Yeah. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's it. Because these are, you know, our brains do good for 30, 40 years and then they, you know, start the long slide. 30, 40. Wait. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> huh? Uh those numbers huh? are too small. <laughs> Reassess. My brain's as sharp as ever. I think actually the data shows that after 50, oh. you're, it's all downhill from there. All right. Yeah. Neurologically yeah. speaking. I better. Great. I, I know when I was in grad school, there was all the talk of, you know, if you're a great mathematician, mm -hmm. none of us were mathematicians, but you have to have your, your mm -hmm. proof by 23 or something, or it's pretty much over. Is that <laughs> yeah. My 23rd birthday was. Right. Going. It's like, yeah. if you're not a championship tennis player by 21, right. that you'll never achieve. You're not an Olympic gymnast by 16. Right. It's over. But we do get smarter as we get older, there we even go. past 50. The, the you know are essentially the whole idea that you get wiser is li actually true. We do accumulated think, wisdom. We do think in more sophisticated mm. ways. You know, we are more thoughtful. More experienced. Generally speaking, more experienced. <clears throat> Our algorithms get more and more complicated as we get older, but it does slow down. So we get slower but better, mm. kind of as we get older. Mm. That's kind of the normal aging uh, thing. And that's both because of accumulated like data, evidence, experiences, knowledge, but also the process itself of you know problem solving or whatever gets gets more sophisticated. I don't know, but more. yeah, I don't I mean I it's I don't know how to oh. separate those two things to be honest. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, but then just biologically things slow down. Right. But that's why mm. the best way to keep your brain healthy is to exercise, physical exercise. Physical. Mm. Just got to yep. keep it biologically healthy. The whole brain training thing is complete nonsense. So playing Wordle in the morning or whatever. <laughs> so yes. I what I what I think the evidence shows uh, is that um, You'll get good there's a certain minimal mm -hmm. amount of brain stimulation that you need to keep mentally healthy, but doing anything beyond that doesn't really matter that mm. much. So you need to keep you know reasonably mentally healthy. It do, it probably does help to keep yourself like doing novel things and keep yourself stimulated. But there's no magic bullet when it comes to like your mental activity. Just do just do anything. But it really helps to keep physically 
fit be physically active. What about the various, you know, pop culture news articles I've read about socializing as you're older and maintaining social connections? That's very helpful too. Yeah. Psychologically, I'm sure that's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. It's psychologically very helpful, which also probably helps, you know, your brain function, but it's hard to know. Here's the thing though. So the, is how are you measuring it, right? So if you're measuring how the brain's doing by just the net, you know, function, you don't know really if the brain is biologically not functioning as well or if it's psychologically not functioning as well. No, Meaning, yeah. yeah, so is it that you're depressed or is it that your brain is not working as well? Like your brain cells are older and because they look the same. You know, in terms of, if you, uh, I mean, you, you, you we're good at telling them apart you know, clinically, but in terms of like, that's what I say, what is the measure? Are you, if you're just measuring IQ, both of those things can sap you of 10 IQ points. And so it's not really, it's a very crude measure. Mm. And so there's always that functional versus biological uh, difference when we get to, when we talk about neurology, it's like, um, anytime you study any kind of neurological recovery, Right. So let's say, for example, I want to study the effect of rehab on people who have had a stroke. Okay. So you, you have, you know, people have a stroke, they have their, you document their neurological functioning, like where their new baseline is. Then you give them, you know, rehab for two months or three months, and then you see how they do and they get better. Right. So the question is, though, are there's, there's always like three things going on with that. There's just time. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it was going to get better just because of time, just because, you know, just, you know, the brain recovering, healing, just the, the inherent healing. There's then there's whatever you think you're doing. Right. Like, are you actually making that healing faster or better? And then there's functional recovery. Like they're just practicing. Like, are they just getting mm-hmm. better at functioning with their deficits or are they really mm. are their deficits really getting better? Mm. And so you can't it's hard to tell those things apart unless you're doing controlled trials. Right. You have to say you have to have just one variable be different. It's like, okay, we're going to do the same time frame. So we're assuming that the healing is the same. Right. We're going to do the same amount of interventions but we're going to then just have one thing different in like a treatment group versus a control group and see if that matters. Mm-hmm. Of course, whenever you do that, it almost always turns out that it doesn't matter. Mm. Right. So they basically just stop doing that. When I say they, I mean like the, the researchers who are trying to show that whatever they're looking at is functional. It's like, all right, well just let's just look and see if rehab helps. It's like, okay, we're well, not really answering anything unless yeah. you, unless you give me a, but of course, you know, they don't want to show that what they do doesn't work, right? right. They want to show mm-hmm. that what they do does work. So it's very easy to rig the game by not controlling for practicing, right? Just for right. getting for functional recovery. Was right. that neurological recovery or is that functional recovery? So quacks use this all the time, sometimes really terrible. So there was one neuro- Florida neurologist that I did a deep dive on, actually gave court testimony against him. And this mm-hmm. was also the guy who um, was the only neurologist out of everyone who had examined it to, to say, I forget the name of this person, but there was a woman who was in a coma and everyone said she's persistent vegetative, but the Republicans made a culture war thing. Oh, out of it. oh well, yeah. Shivo. Shivo. Yeah, Shivo. Oh, and, yeah. Well, and one that. neurologist. 20 years ago. That was yeah, the whole thing. Was long time. One neurologist said, no, she can recover. And this was this guy. Uh. This was that guy who's a total quack. Um, and it turned out, of course, when they when she died, they did an autopsy. Her brain weighed half as much as a normal brain should weigh, and it was she clearly was had no potential for recovery, and she was persistent vegetative. But so his thing was he had his quack treatment, right? So he would take people that ten years after a stroke, and he would give them the quack treatment, which was total nonsense, but also give them physical rehabilitation, mm. physical therapy. Yeah. And then show that they got better. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's because of the you're taking somebody who's sitting on a couch and you're giving them physical therapy. Of course they had a functional improvement. Right. It doesn't mean that your treatment is biologically fixing the brain, which of course is the claim that they make. Right. Yeah. It's like take this weight loss drug, but also eat right and exercise. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. Look what's happening. Right. Exactly. All right. Here's a question for you. I'm going to probably get the details of this wrong, but I have a friend who has ALS. And so she posts a lot oh, about the thanks uh, about the treatments 
that she's having or not having and, and, and the various trials. And there was some hearing <clears throat> in Congress, maybe 10 months ago about the particular medication. Steve, you might even know the name. I don't remember it. And they did some randomized controlled trials. And basically, statistically, there was no real difference between the yeah. groups. But in the treatment group that did receive this thing, there were one or two that like did pretty well. But statistically, yeah. all the same. And if anything, on average, the people who took the drug did fared worse. Mm -hmm. But the folks on the side of I'm a patient, I have ALS, said, it's my life. I'm going to die in a few years anyway. Let me take this drug because I saw one example that it seemed to help on average. Yeah. Where he, he beat the odds. And he could have just beat the odds because that's just how he was going to go. What is your... What, explain this. What is your stance on just sort of the ethics of, of if you're if you're a you know a dying patient, uh, can you right take weird stuff? So the short answer is yes, uh, because there is something called compassionate use. Ah. So if you have a, a terminal, untreatable yeah. illness, then the ethics and you know the guidelines for what becomes acceptable are different, right? Yeah. It's, and so. It, there's we are tolerant of much greater risk and uncertainty and like ALS is the classic disease for that. It's like, okay, you're going to be dead in two years. Yeah. So what do you got to lose at this point? If you want to throw the dice on really speculative treatments, but we do like to not make people die quicker, you know? Mm -hmm. So it yeah, doesn't mean right. you don't How old fashioned of you. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't mean you don't study it, but once you have data, yeah. showing that it doesn't work or showing that people die faster with the intervention then that then it's no longer acceptable it's no longer experimental it's right harmful you know that's right. different you can't right. so the compassionate care is yes you know we will use things that haven't been proven not to work yet as long as there's any rationale yeah again i don't believe you could use that to support magic you know basically but if he's like any reason and again i i I don't really treat ALS anymore, but I did for a while mm -hmm. because I shifted more over to, you know, to migraine in my later career. But early on, I did, I did, I treated a lot of patients with ALS and yeah, hard. we would, yeah. we would give them everything that was experimental, that was reasonable, that was being studied. We would try to do it always in the context of a, of a treatment trial, mm -hmm. but we, but we wouldn't withhold anything that had any chance of working from, right. from our patients because other, otherwise it's, you know, we, we know the outcome, but here's the other thing about ALS with, and why you can't just say, well, this one guy did really well because ALS is not a disease. It's a syndrome, right? Yeah. It's a clinical, like ALS is defined by upper and motor neuron, upper and lower motor neurons dying, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. It's defined by the cell population that's dying not by the mechanism by which they're dying. Mm. And so anything that causes them to die gives you ALS. Ooh. So ALS ah. is actually many diseases. It's many diseases. It's not one disease. Hmm. And so, you know, we, we break it down at least into a few subcategories. So definitely familial and sporadic, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have a family history? Do you not have a family history? And then familial, it's like you have one of the known mutations or you don't have any of the known mutations. And then sporadic is sporadic, meaning there's no family history, came out of nowhere. And, you know, we have some things that we know about people who have sporadic ALS, like we might separate them out in terms of like, did it start in your mouth or did it start in your limbs? You know, how old were you at the onset, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that's just sort of demographic, you know, mm -hmm. information. Um but uh, uh, but you know, we know we have averages. Yeah. But but some people clearly have a different disease than the, right. than the, the typical. In humans variety. only, or other animals have this? You know, yeah, sharks get yeah. ALS. Steve, should we be eating sharks? No oh, other animals. Only their cartilage. Yeah. 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 If Steve, if there's lots of mechanisms, <clears throat> are there some of those mechanisms me mechanisms that are very treatable? So the most treatable ones are the genetic ones because we know exactly what's happening, mm. right? Um, but the, the we so we the we don't know the mechanism. That's a thing. We, it's not like for the sporadic ALS. The, it, it, there's like yeah, there's like twenty possible plausible mechanisms, and they all seem to be playing a role. Mm. Uh, we have like way way more leads then we know what to do with. Mm -hmm. It actually has even led to the hypothesis that um, ALS is a threshold effect, meaning that um, 
everybody's got it to a certain extent. No, no, it's, zero. It's, that, it's that there's like, all right, there's like, let's say a dozen different things that will stress out your motor neurons and lead them to go undergo apoptosis to die. But everyone could have a different contribution mm. of those 12 things leading, increasing the stress. And so there mm. could be thousands of permutations that might lead to this threshold of mm. the neurons start to die. Um, and so that, so the, in terms of treatment, what do we do then? Do we study one mechanism at a time? Right. Because none of them seem to work. When Can't you do it that way, and that does it. or do we uh, test a dozen at a time, but then we won't know which ones are working, right. even though we, there might be a cumulative benefit. Oh, wow. Can't AI right. game all that out, right? Run mm -hmm. all the scenarios and see where things land? Well, I'm sure we'll, you know, they'll start using AI to help design, you know, look for uh, uh, potential targets, et cetera. One, so one uh, ALS research institute, they developed, so the, the, the game was about developing a model, right? So um, we, we want to like have motor neurons in a Petri dish where we could then subject them to a thousand different substances and see which one makes them live longer right and so they did that they had this sort of drug assay model that they used and assay. it produced assay. like all right we tested like these thousands of potential drugs and these three look promising and they did the, but they didn't work out in clinical trials mm -hmm. it's just it's been very frustrating in terms of the research because like yeah there's a couple treatments now which do a little bit you know but you know it's been a almost an unrelenting series of disappointments clearly. yeah clearly we're just still we're still a layer or two away from really understanding what's going on well enough to and to and it. are there uh are there populations that see none of it in other words hmm. genetic groups of people in wherever mongolia or something in which there is no, no there are populations who get it a lot more like or a lot more likely, more to likely. Get it. yeah but but that are, I, no, no populations population. that are protected from it. Okay. Who's yeah. more likely? Well, for a time, there was, there was a cluster in Guam that we had no idea what, what was going on there. Oh, wow. And they were also more likely to get uh, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's as well as ALS. Whoa. Wow. And they would get all three together even. Um, and then it was discovered like 15, 16 years ago that... Um, the local population was eating fruit bats Ooh. who were eating nuts that had a neurotoxin in them. And they were concentrating That's it right enough it? to cause it was a neurotoxicity. To oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So stop doing that. Wow. How did, and then uh, there's a, then there's a, then there's a study that there are studies which show that like, if you've been electrocuted <clears throat> at some point in your life, you're more likely to get ALS later on. Hmm. How electrocuted? Well, obviously, <laughs> you survive. Like, you get electrocuted, but you survive. You're yeah. more likely to have ALS. I'm like static on my socks. Well, there's carpet shark shock yeah. and lightning strike and everything in between. So yeah. I, I guess the same. Yeah. And then there was the um, the burn pit, you know, Gulf War syndrome oh, yeah. thing. Oh, gosh, yes. Uh, which, you know, it's, it's hard what to know until we get that data. Well, you know about the burn pits? Classic. I don't know. You ever heard that term? I don't. I mean, I can guess it doesn't sound good. So in... I think it was both Afghanistan and in Iraq. Okay. Yeah. There was this practice that the army had where they would take any of the refuse and that they, rather than throwing it away, they would put it, they would incinerate it. Okay. But they would incinerate it in these open burn pits. And there was a lot of just toxic chemicals just mm. coming out and that soldiers were exposed to. Mm. So yeah, so there was a the potential toxic exposure there. Okay. Like hanging around a tire fire. Isn't yeah, basically. Oh. Oh, it looks oh, like. Oh yeah, um, well, the, that's a burn I mean, pit. Uh, that's a burn pit. Yeah. Uh, gosh. Just Jeez. keep throwing stuff in there, and uh, yeah. get rid of it. Yeah. Mm. So it's Read a complicated, complicated story, and I've been out of it oh, yeah. myself. I haven't <laughs> been like at them research meetings for ten years, so yeah, I'm not totally up to date on it. Okay. Um, we'll see. I mean, the hope is like you know we have like the monoclonal antibodies, which mm -hmm. are starting to show some clinical benefit for Alzheimer's. It's still modest but at least it's something it's the first time it's something <laughs> more than nothing and we're hoping to replicate that with als and mm -hmm. with other other neurodegenerative diseases as well um what about hydroxychloroquine 
Yeah, hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> we're just trying Stop to. Them if anyone needs we're it. still yeah. just happy if we slow it down. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah. 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 Forget about you're stopping happy it. And you slow it. Forget about reversing it. We yeah. just want to slow it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, my I I I have a, a friend with ALS, but I also we have a good family friend who recently passed away from it. And my father's making a movie oh, about him. Wow. And uh, my dad's a filmmaker. It's not just like a like a you, you know for fun. Watch the hobby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. But um, but he was uh, he was in the military, active duty. He was a, a hardcore athlete, like like like. 100 mile right iron man's all that kind yeah. of stuff my understanding is sometimes extreme athletes are more prone to it <clears throat> and when you said that about guam i'm going to reveal how little i know about u.s territories but he's from american samoa yeah that's so that guam. feels like three things yeah that are, are bad um but he had it during COVID. it was really horrible anyway I don't... Mm. it was and at the end of the day it was probably just bad luck yeah it had nothing yeah. to do with anything yeah. He wore a T-shirt that I'm sure others with ALS have that that just said on the back, if a doctor diagnoses you with ALS, mostly all they can say is sorry mm -hmm. because of how little there is. It's probably a little more than that. It's so, <laughs> it, all right. I, I I will strongly push back against that. So okay. Good. Here's the thing. There's a bias in our culture, and I I get it. I totally yeah. get it. But the, yeah. there's this and, and I think even in training people you kind of start out with this bias and you have to learn you have to get it beaten out of you that anything other than a cure is doing nothing right ah uh, yeah and yeah. that is so not true mm -hmm. and so even though we even without a cure or an effective treatment for the process of ALS itself we have good management good ALS management mm -hmm. can make can make somebody survive for years longer than they otherwise would right. without good ALS management. Mm -hmm. So it's not nothing, you know, right. it's not, so we don't, we don't just say, kind of sorry, ever. you know, update your will and good riddance to you. It's like, there's a ton of stuff that we mm. do to manage the illness, making, making sure that they get proper nutrition, that they can eat without choking, that they can breathe, you know, all these things, Right. you know, that's it, true. And it still can prolong your life for like a year. Or, right. or longer right. than not getting proper management, right. right? So that, again, because it's not like disease modifying, people, I think, underestimate how yeah. much of an impact that actually has. And I, I got to tell you, again, I haven't been there personally, but I've held the hands of many patients who have been there. When you're facing like a lifespan measured in months, yeah, everything matters. Yeah, Like getting an extra six months an extra year and it is huge. People start thinking in terms of, you know, am I going to see like, how old are my children going to be when I die? And you know what I mean? Like they, yeah. it, so it, it makes a huge difference because your, your priorities massively shift. Yeah. And, and uh, even saying, you know, we'll, we'll keep you comfortable and we'll keep you functional, you know, as long as we can, it'll add six months, a year to your life, you know, whatever you know like they're not happy but it's but, a big deal but it's a big deal and they'll take yeah. it you know yeah. and then yeah. i've had patients who've had the other you know they basically who like i literally had one patient flee the exam room when they got the diagnosis they're like i'm out of here you know and they left and they they had no had no health care for six to eight months when they came back mm -hmm. they basically went the alternate they went hunting for the cure for like yeah. this, they rejected all the science-based information went looking for a cure for eight months then came back and w were like miserable mm -hmm. you know because mm -hmm. they just they wasted eight years eight months of what little life they had left they lost an opportunity to basically make the most you know out of what time they had left and stay as healthy as possible for as long as possible on a completely wasted journey um and they and they regretted it massively yeah you know uh and that's that's part of why i get so angry about like alternative medicine gurus who lure people away from good medical treatment because it's not a cure mm -hmm. and they give them a false promise and they don't even give them good medical management right mm -hmm. they, they they rob them of what little you know they have precious time precious yeah, time. precious time yeah, not to mention every last dime their family has. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. Because it's, that. you know, it, it creates the other scenario where 
It's like, okay, it's going to cost $100,000 for you to inject stem cells into your ass, right? Or whatever, mm -hmm. right? They're going to give you this fake stem cell treatment. It's going to cost, you know, could end up costing two, three dollars $300,000 at the end of the day. And so um, what family is going to say no? You know, when they're like, this is, I'm going to, uh, this is my only chance at surviving, you know, more than a year or two, whatever. So they mortgage the house, they yep. get Kickstarter, whatever, they do all these things. It's like, it's this massive guilt. Even if they feel like there's something wrong with this, they can't, what are they going to say? No, you have to yeah. reside yourself to your own imminent death. And right. Not no, there. anything. Yeah. Because then the, 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 what have I got to lose thinking becomes really dominant. And sometimes I have to talk to people about what they have to lose. You have what you can lose is what time you have left. What you can lose is a lot of quality of life. Mm -hmm. What you can lose is psychologically wrapping your head around this because then they make bad decisions. If they don't come to terms with what's happening, then they end up really behind the eight ball. So the biggest single decision that ALS patients have to make is whether or not they go, they get intubated. Right. Right. Mm, right. You get to a that, point, you, no, no fix. It. Yeah. Once you, get you choose point, that, that's it. Well, the thing is, you get to a point where it's either intubation or death. And in fact, those are treated as the same outcome in clinical trials. Whoa. Right. It's intubation wow. free survival. Right. That's the outcome. Intubation free survival. Wow. If get, because if you get intubated, you can survive indefinitely. Right. Or we make you comfortable and you pass away. It's a huge decision. Right. And it doesn't hmm. sound a hard decision, though. It is a hard oh, decision. Oh, uh, it's got to be an so, impossible decision. But Bob. It, I don't, I, well, what what do you think your quality of life is permanently on a ventilator? Right. Death, death or intubation? Intubation or intubation? Yeah. So uh, most patients choose not to get intubated. Most really? patients. Choose, I didn't yeah. know that. Oh yeah, yeah. The vast majority, because you have to, you know. And again, I we support whatever decision they make. You know, I don't know what decision I would make. It, I think it has to do with how tolerant are you of being somebody who needs total health, total care at that point, you can't, it's not just that you're intubated, you're completely paralyzed. And you at can't point, like the guy in the iron lung who just passed yeah, away. The right. Other day. Right. So imagine you can't move your arms. You can't move your legs. You can't do anything for you. You have a feeding tube and you have a, 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 a ventilator breathing for you. Quality and of life. That's your life. Now, if you think you can be happy with that as your life, if you need, if you lead enough of an intellectual existence that you think you could tolerate that and get enough out of life that you want to go that route, we will do that for you and we will make it work. Uh, but you better not go into that not having really wrestled with that decision. Yeah. So the people who end up in, in the worst scenario are the ones who where that decision is thrust upon them and they are not ready for that decision. And right. So they, and that is usually in one of two scenarios, they came really late to it, to medical attention. So the diagnosis was made when they were very close to that point, or they got the diagnosis and then did not get standard medical care and put off psychologically accepting mm -hmm. their diagnosis and their, and their fate until they had a, they were in, they were in the emergency room. It's like, okay, it's, now or never, do you want to mm. be intubated or you want morphine? Here are your choices. And if you have not spent months getting comfortable with that decision, yeah, you know, it's it's horrible. They generally decide to get intubated if that's like they're not ready for the choice. And they, in my experience, the the you know, the few patients I've had who have gone that route really regretted their decision. Really? really? They were very unhappy, very unhappy with that decision. So they'd yeah. rather be dead. They'd rather be dead. How long would they stay intubated? And ultimately, do you just decide when, when you've, you've... they decide it's, it's totally... that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They decide. But it's a, believe me, it's a lot harder to decide to have the intubation removed than to just not have had it put in in the first place. <sighs> oh boy. So they're really in a hard place at that point. So the, so that's why like once the diagnosis is made, there's a lot of management that goes on. There's a yeah. lot of psychological management. There's a lot of social services management. There's a lot of family management. There's managing nutrition and, and diet. There's managing breathing and secretions and all that stuff. And it makes a massive difference, a massive difference. Wow. You know, so 
yeah, you, you, and the thinking that well, they can't cure me, so um, on my own, like that's really pernicious. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Think that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, that decision, I won't spoil the movie and I really don't mean this to be a pitch for the, for the film. It's also in progress. Um, yeah. But that decision was very big in their life and I didn't realize it was such a big decision for patients. It is. It's huge. Yeah. Oh, well, happy Friday, everyone. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, can I do a horrible segue? Yeah. Please. Okay. Yeah. We, need one. <laughs> we got Bob, another killer right, clown Bob. thing. So speaking of increasing the amount of time you have left, oh, yeah. oh. go on. I listened to a short story on YouTube last night, 20 minute story, which it was intense, an intense story right, that cool. I loved. Tell us and in less than 30 minutes. The <laughs> title is, the title is if you're armed and at the Glenmont Metro, please shoot me. So <laughs> it's about it's about frame jacking. Have you guys are you familiar with frame jacking? jacking? No, no. Mm -hmm. It's basically it's basically tweaking your experience of the world so that if you're thinking faster, then then you could in one minute you can think the equivalent of an hour type mm -hmm. of thing, right? Mm -hmm. That's but the yeah. world is slowing down for you, so the world seems to go more slowly. It looks like everything's in slow motion. If you drop something, it mm. falls. Time That's dilation. It. So this guy goes into an experiment. He takes this pill mm. and he takes it. And the guy said, all right, we'll be, he puts him in the waiting room and said, we'll be back in a half hour. So he's waiting mm. and he's like, he gets a book and he reads the entire book and he looks at the clock. It's three minutes later. It's like, Oh, this is really working. Now he notices that his body of course seems to be moving in slow motion as well. And cause his mind oh. is just so frame jacked that his body is moving really, really slowly. So the rest of the story, oh. take the rest of the story follows that this guy and his frame jacking. Mm -hmm. You know, he's test, he's tested. The guy throws up a box of of Cheerios in the air, and there's all these little Cheerios in the air, and he grabs them with toothpicks while they're in the air. He's thinking ah. fast that he could grab them very quickly. Of course, his body is still limited, but he can move his body. You know. Your body can still move pretty fast. Mm -hmm. If you could think fast uh, enough to control it that so, precisely. And yeah. he's, he's juggling six balls without any problem because to him, they're just going very, very slowly. Yeah. Like juggling balloons or something. Yeah. yeah. So the story continues. I don't want to give away much more, but I'll just say that this, pro this frame jacking problem that he's experiencing gets way worse. It yeah. gets ridiculously worse. Um, and like, that's I mean, like, be careful what you like wish for kind of thing. Frozen in time, kind of? Uh, not, well, well, life not becomes frozen. unlivable. Not, yeah. Well, not frozen, but moving it's so really slowly slow. that it's like a lot of time passes. And um, so if you're armed and at the Glenmont Metro, please shoot me is the name of it. Okay. Um, fascinating. And then there's also a sequel. There's a sequel to <laughs> it um, yeah. that I'm listening to now. And uh, interesting story. Just like you're just, I was like riveted. Like, wow. Oh, I'm going to listen tonight. That reminds what? me of a funny cartoon I saw once where they, there's one frame where like a guy finds a, you know, a bottle and he rubs it and a genie comes out and he gets a wish. And he says, I wish I would like to live forever. And then in the next frame, he's <laughs> naked, floating in the heat death of the universe. <laughs> yeah, like, <right>. Dang. <laughs> like, yeah. I, did, I did not <laughs> think this through. Yeah. But I mean, what, <laughs> what, what, what happens is it says a trillion years later yeah. and he's naked in space and he's like, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, I have no sympathy for this guy. You got a poorly wish. worded wish. If you got a wish, you got to think yeah. about the wish. You got to think yeah. about the wish. What are you, what are you, you going for? Phrase it in such a way to cover this stupid stuff that you're not anticipating. I have no sympathy for that guy. <laughs> Bob, what's a better, what would you wish for if you had one wish? How would you frame it? Oh, my, wait, one wish? Oh, yeah, wait. you get one. You know, yeah. I, just, I can't just answer that. I got to think about it. See, I got to think about it. There's many, there's so many ways, so many different things that I, that I could ask for. I mean, well, I think the unlimited power to regenerate tissue in yourself and others with no cancer is a, is a good, that's okay. a, you know, is, you know, is a good, good wish. That way you can create immortality for as long as right. you want in you and others. Yeah. But, but along that line, that's why my go to like superpower, I've mentioned this before, my yeah. go-to is, is kind of like enhanced intelligence. So, um, so, but, but I've evolved my answer to, to a degree that I have kind of like a dial where it's like, all right, I want to be a thousand times smarter for the next hour. And then I could dial it down 
if I want, just so that people I can interact with people yeah. and, not, and not think of people as bacteria because they're right. just stupid. <laughs> but maybe I, the, the thousand so. times smarter for you doesn't want to do turn it back down. Well, yeah, that's the the that, as well, <laughs> that, as well, that I would have automatic. It would be automatically. Would You'd automatically, be smart enough to undo the automatic turn down. I know. I mean, <laughs> you can take that down. You can take that down. But that's I mean, if yourself. I'm if I'm happy, not you dealing fools, with I'll squash you like insects. Yeah, but I think I would. I would still. I would miss you guys and be like, I want to talk to stupid Steve now because <laughs> no, no, dial down. Like, ha, ha, Steve, you're wrong, buddy. You know, yeah. I would enjoy that too. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I would think I would. I, I would not. I would miss interaction with that people. whole thing that whole plot line was covered on spongebob by the way <laughs> really yeah no spoilers don't yeah, pa anyone. patrick has his head knocked off and he replaces it and unwittingly brain puts coral. brain yeah. coral and he becomes super smart but he's he so hilarious. smart yeah it's hilarious he becomes too smart to stay friends with spongebob and he eventually gets lonely and he That's opts funny. to have his stupid brain put back in there you <laughs> go that, that, that's one of my favorite sub genres of science fiction where it's human, it's human augmentation, brain augmentation, and there, I can give you lots of examples. Lots of like, if you have a sign, like even Farscape. Farscape has an episode where the main character gets really smart, and I just love, I love that subgenre or it's next generation where where uh, Barkley mm. gets and the one of my yeah. favorite episode where he gets ridiculously IQ of 1200 or whatever. I love, I love those episodes. But what pisses me off is that often. As a human gets smarter, they become evil. It's like, wait, yeah, why and assholes? Evil? Yeah, they're just smarter. You know, they're not even. They're not a thousand times smarter. They're maybe a hundred times smarter. Why are they becoming evil? They just assume that you would become you because become evil. And that just, because of know, the goatee. Because the base humans are inconvenienced yeah. you at that point. They're more of it's a pest, like you said. The, the normies, the normies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, That's but it's wild. a it's a great Perception. short story. Check it out on on YouTube. It's a fun. It was like you're. I was riveted for 20 How years. How did you find it in the first place? I never, I'm not good at finding random. I found stuff. it on Reddit, on Reddit, um, uh -huh. subreddit, like a science fiction subreddit. And, um, and uh, yeah, I just, it just ate it up. It was, it was a lot of fun. I'll tell you one scene towards the end, he's blinking. So when his eyes close, he then experiences a week of darkness. <sighs> because it takes him, uh, that it takes it that long for his eye to open wow. up again. So yeah. I just feel like. Yeah, not not a fun time. Wow. All right. A week. Wow. I mean, I've wondered about people <laughs> I know who I think are very smart if they just walk around and in every conversation are bored out of their minds. Mm -hmm. Probably are. You three, are you bored out of your minds all the time? No, I hadn't. I'm not bored out of my mind, but I have thought about um, like as I get older. Like for example, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot harder to impress and entertain me. Mm. Right, like I watch You're shows and TV. Sure. You get jaded because I'm like, mm. I see plot lines coming a mile mm. fucking away. <laughs> you know, and part of it, I was just thinking about this the other day. Like, you, you learn the language of editors, of like yeah. film editors and directors, and to the point, like you know, like when you're watching a show. And they switch to that camera, and you're in a car. Like you, two people are talking in the car, mm -hmm. and they switch to that camera, and you're like that car is about to get hit from the driver's side. Yep. <laughs> right? You yep. know what's going to happen because it happens a hundred percent of the time. That's the only time they ever use that camera angle, and yep. they will never fool you with that again. Right? <laughs> like there's just so many things like that where it's like, yep, saw that coming. You know, that's why I appreciate it so much when you have something. That it doesn't fall, you, that doesn't rely on all of those cliches. Right. You know, that right. is really new. Genuinely, it, yeah, genuinely yeah. surprising. What hasn't been used, right? It's a, a yeah. right. never diminishing. And imagine imagine set how of jaded, features. how jaded would we become after, you know, five Like after, years. after 500 years, like, is it impossible to entertain you at that point? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I seriously wonder about that. Yeah. You just look at like the cover image of a movie and you know what happens. You just, yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. if you like were like not only lived for hundreds of years, but like in perfect health and you know without dementia and all of that course, stuff. Yep. Then you're like you, you you could say, oh yeah, this is like this is the 33rd iteration of this plot sub yeah. you know, genre that I you know whatever you could break everything <laughs> down so much like there's. Well, it's also you see your friends or you know they live their lives and then yeah. they move on and you see the sa people just do the same thing. You're like, we did this in the '60s. Yeah, oh my God. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you get into an argument with somebody and like they say one thing and you're like, all right, here's here's how this argument's gonna yeah. go. You know, yeah, yeah. Say this. I'm gonna say that. 
you I already do this. I already yeah. know like I'm thinking five steps ahead because I've had this argument how many yeah. times uh, yeah. or this discussion. Imagine how completely frustrating that would yeah. be. Okay. Yeah, when, that's <laughs> why that, so that's good. why that's why forgetting is important. Yes. <laughs> so, having a photographic memory, th there are people that have had photographic memories, nemanists, to such a level that they they can't focus because yeah. they're reading something and it reminds them of this. Then this reminds them of that. And they're, they're just lost in a wave yeah. of, yeah, these, of these associations and memories. Well, so here's the question, Bob. With memory fade, what's huh? the, what is the optimal memory fade? Yeah, Ooh, for a for for a indefinitely sustained consciousness, so it's got to be long enough that you you remember yourself and your history and it's functional, but but it's enough fading has to occur that you're not you know horribly bored at existence because you've seen it all and done it all a million times. Right. Well, it, it depends what options you, you know as as the technology advances and our what we can do when experience increases there'll be many more things to experience and, yeah you know, so that would help but yeah that that's a good question what would it be yeah. would it, you know 500 years a thousand years or i don't know i mean you could build that into your psyche you know your your mind if you if you want i guess there's another manifestation of it so there's we talked about movies and tv but also video games i like to play video games mm. i get bored of video games faster and faster and faster and faster and faster uh, right that's true mm -hmm. because oh, it's interesting yeah, I'm saying I burn my way through them much more quickly. Yeah, and 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 then there, there there there's been at least a couple of times when I was literally instantly bored. Like this, <laughs> like instantly. You are hyper framed or whatever the phrase. That no, it's just like well, you know, I, play, yeah, I, I, I I I gave the game a try and like ten minutes in, I'm like, nope, this that offers nothing new. Wow, this is I'm already bored with this game. Next, you know. Wow, right. Yeah, but there's some great, fantastic games out there that totally hook me still. But you have to do something new, right? Right? You anything derivative is already like, you know, already instantly boring. Well, and because I'm incapable of not thinking about generative AI, at first, as you were saying that, I thought, okay, good. Like it is by default derivative because we're just yeah. in our own. It can't be new. But then I was like, well, you could no combine a novel <clears throat> combination, so it actually could be spontaneously new. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Filled me with hope and then despair in, in a second. So. But it, it's weird. It's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm reading like I'm reading a subreddit that I love. You know, it's a really fascinating thread. So I so I'll read the article, then I read the comments. I go through the comments, and there's some interesting comments. And um, but after a while, I'm like, I love this, but I'm bored of this thing that I love. I got to go to another subreddit and find yeah. Yeah. something new and exciting because I've already <laughs> this to death. But I. I was like, I should continue because I'm learning something and it's fascinating, but I yeah. just get bored. I get bored with it. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and like there, there are times when I think I'm bored with my life. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's just, no. I got to do something new because yeah. I'm just, I like everything. Trying I like my life. Like, there's, my life is full of stuff and everything. But I do think, yeah, yeah. I feel a little like, I, you know, I got to go somewhere else or just, I, know I need, I need something new in my things. life. I, need I know what we could do, Steve. We yep. talked about it. Go to Japan. Yeah. Well, it's definitely Ooh, travel. Yes. We're going, going to travel. Japan. We should yeah. We're going to Japan. SGU. That, that yeah. to Japan. Might take a couple of years or <laughs> more, but we're going. Right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I don't know, a new hobby. I don't know. I take up glass blowing. I don't know. I got to do something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that. like your your question about what's the optimal forgetting, like what's the optimal amount of novelty and, and what kind of novelty? Is it like a new yeah. thing you're doing with your hands and brain or is it like – the environment has to be new or is it, yeah, you're in a new place. Like there's gotta be different types. Yeah. Yeah. When was the last people time? will require different ones. Right. Well, Steve, when was the last time you put on your virtual reality gear? And I, I play that every now and then I do. Do you um, find, do you still find that? Oh, interesting. Yeah, totally. And I'm wait again, that's something like technology is the new bit, right? So as technology gets better and new thing happens, that's old. That's something that's by definition new. So, I mean, it's not as it doesn't blow me away like it did the first time I played it. And I'm I'm waiting for enough of an improvement to Killer. upgrade my equipment. Yeah, yeah. So far, ah. I have it. It's been incremental, incremental, not enough to spend five hundred bucks or whatever. I know Apple came out with their three thousand dollar thing. I'm like, nah, mm. I'm gonna, I'll wait for Gen two another, or three on that another, thing. Another so you know anyone who's getting that? I don't. I don't know you anyone know. who has it. Steve, I yeah. read I read that they're creating. They've got in the lab now these uh, super. OLED screens that 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 can be used for VR yeah. that are that have higher resolution than human vision. 
It's like be, it's like they're at the point where yeah. it's basically beyond where you would notice a difference if it got, if it got higher res. Yeah. Um, Go on. Go on. But so one of the best games I've played is a VR game. Is you know Half Life Alex, Alex is incredible. It's, incredible. it's an incredible. Yeah. I played it through twice. Uh, again, I have to wait for enough memory fade that I can play it again. <laughs> Um, right, so I can play video games every few, like a good video game. I can go back to it after three or four years, and it, it, I forget enough of the details that it's that it's still fun. Uh, but I'm waiting for the another game that's that good in mm. VR to come out, and I don't. Mm. It's just really slow. Oh, they just. Yeah. I think we're we're still in that awkward phase where, awkward. like, there isn't enough killer applications to justify a lot of people getting it, and and there there isn't enough justification to make the killer apps because not enough people own the, the hardware to buy it right and so I'm, I'm a little disappointed like when i first got into it maybe five six years ago i thought by now there would be a lot more content yeah. um, but but also I, i've also noticed that video game big titles have just slowed down in general i think they're just taking mm. longer and longer and longer to put them out and that's so part ambitious. of that's part of the the increased production value which mm. is which i want and need to keep me interested right but it's taking more time and it's frustrating. It's like, Christ, when the fuck is the next Fallout going to come out? <laughs> right? You know, I mean, shit. Yeah. Wait, isn't there a Netflix Fallout coming? There is. There's a TV show coming in April, <sighs> April 11th or 12th, I think. Oh, so, my God, next month. Yes, wow. right after right after the uh, the eclipse. And they're going to drop right. it all at once. <clears throat> and it looks oh. amazing. And I'll it, burn through it probably in two or three days. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He needs his fix. This is amazing. <laughs> I do. I, I, that's the other thing with binging. It's the same thing. It's like, yeah. you know, like we, I burn through content so fast. Yeah. It's, it's like, I mean, come on, like, entertain me. Come right. on. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 and dancing. Liz, Liz and I, Liz and I are burning through every Survivor season ever. Oh, wow. Yeah. Survivor wow. season. Wow. We're up to like 33. And, um, and I started watching the new season, but every week, I gotta wait a week for the <coughs> episode, and it's killing me because we're going in between. Oh my Wednesday god! Wednesday to Wednesday, I watch an entire new season, or more, or maybe more, almost two seasons of previous seasons before I see the latest episode of the newest <laughs> season. It's like it's frustrating waiting a whole week. So that's an interesting question too, because I I get frustrated when I have to wait the week. Yeah, but I also like it. Yeah, because it forces me to anticipate it. It spreads out. So I, I think like about what might happen. I like having some shows where it's one drop a week, but I also need other things that I can binge yeah. through. Right, so it's right. like having a combination, I think, is kind of where <laughs> the sweet spot is. Like Succession, and like I watched <laughs> House of the Dragon, and I felt like pacing those out was right. Yeah. You could like talk yeah. about it and think about it and, and whatever, but... Yeah. Right, but then there are shows like, I want to see what happens next. I don't want to wait a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, like my boyfriend's mother watched all of Game of Thrones in like a week or during what? the pandemic wow. lockdown. And I just wow. feel like that's she watched every that's, single one. There's only 168 hours in a week. <laughs> Maybe not a whole week, but uh, she just nonstop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, she lived alone, couldn't leave the house. Uh, got oh, yeah, okay. two weeks. Yeah. Six episodes in a day, more. Oh, it was <laughs> nonstop. Yeah. We just, but she also wasn't paying close attention. We'd like hear it on in the background, like when we called her and stuff. So it wasn't quite. But oh. you must have had such an emotionally different experience, right? The the final yeah. season doesn't mean as much to you if you've only put two weeks, even if it is yes. your entire life into true. it. Right. So That's your true. emotional attachment, you know, and we talk about like the golden age of TV, like Mad Men, Breaking Bad, all of that was spread out. And we were, I was yeah. thinking about Mad Men for years. Years. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That was such a good series. Yeah. Yeah. Six My Feet Under. My therapist has never seen it and it. It bugs me a little bit. I yeah. think. Your therapist. Well, I've read it on Draper a few times and she doesn't know yeah. what I'm talking about. I'm like, okay. You need to share that with me. No. Yeah. yeah. It's not good. Uh, should we move on to the Jeopardy before we... Um, can that's late. Why don't we, 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 we table that? Table, so yeah, I, have, next week. I have oh, two wait. other things. I have an update in AI if you guys want to see Let's it. Let's do it. Let's go. All right. Uh, AI me. All right. So Ian is an AI, by the way, if you guys are yeah. aware. Yeah, he's deep. He is the most sophisticated AI that we've ever built. Yeah. Yes, yeah. advanced neural whatever. I hope uh, his neurons replace mine bit by bit. <laughs> Intelligent adaptation of neural link. Speaking of oh. bit, oh, neural bit by bit. What let's think of some phrases that relate to the SGU. They could be right. the fun taglines like it's a hybrid. Mm -hmm. Uh give me some more real quick. 
Uh, what else? Let's see. What else? Or just our fun things. You know, like you. Science, science or fiction. Science or fiction. Okay. okay. Uh, who's that noisy? Who's that? Definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, remarkable. Remarkable. Only lately. I don't know how well this remarkable. is going. To so I'm, this is the first time I'm testing it, but we'll try it. Okay, go ahead. Any other things you think of when you think of the um, other Name when that Martin logical Martin. fallacy. Skeptical mm. thinking. Okay, yeah. Name that logical. Name that mm -hmm. logical fallacy. You could just be general, like... Things about scientific the skepticism. There we go. Critical oh, thinking. Okay. Yeah. Scientific. Oh. Quickie whip up. Skepticism. <laughs> uh, quick, Jay Rant. Science news. Yeah. Science. Okay. And science. Let me just do that. And uh, give me a style of music that you would like to hear. Funk. Style of funk. music. Are we going with oh, funk? Zydeco. Zydeco. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of funk, too. Uh, no, not really, but it's PNAS, yeah. Louisiana funk. Louisiana funk. Louisiana funk. All right, I'll say uh, funk and I'll say Zydeco. How do you spell Zydeco? Z Y D E C O? Uh, it's next to Zydeco. 300. 300. Zydeco. Birds versus yeah. monkeys, of course. Zydeco. Uh, and give me a title of what? Your Royal <laughs> Highness. It's like Let's, a song? Of a, yeah, sure. Oh. Skeptic's Guide to the Future. Okay. That's a title. <laughs> Heard that somewhere before. How about Skeptic's Guide to Funk. Skeptic's there Guide to Funk. Yeah, okay. Really. So let's this is an app called uh oh, Suno oh, AI. <clears throat> and the intent by behind it is to uh you can pump in some lyrics, a style of music. It's gonna make a song and it will make a song. No a song. Shit. Step and it aside, makes Taylor it, Swift. Here we go. You noticed I, I clicked create as I brought it up. We'll see how long Skeptics it takes. Skeptic's Guide to Funk. <clears throat> Skeptic's Guide to Funk. So it's a little funk Zydeco. So oh, George see. should be here for we this. We could do yeah. some reggae. Oh, yeah. Next time, we'll bring George on for this, and we'll see what, what he thinks we'll about it. We'll put more than 30 Klezmer seconds music. of thought into it. And Klezmer, see. Yeah. Well, well, because it's AI generated, we cannot make money off of it or own it in any way. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It better yeah, not be I that guess good. That's fair. Yeah, that's right. Good. Can you hear that? Sounds a little Zydeco. Yeah, it's a hybrid <laughs> science of fiction. Unmarkable skeptical. This is amazing. Name that logical fallacy. Whose voice is okay? Scientific skepticism science. Wow. It just hurts everything I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's clever. Oh, so wow. it, it's just it's literally awesome. reading the lyrics. It's so like, it read the lyrics that I wrote, but I, I don't think I generated. I think I should. What have you want to do generated. is take that, put it into Chat GPT, and say, "Make me a poem with these." Well, words. here it is. Actually, this is I, I should. I was supposed to click generate lyrics. I wasn't sure if it was just going to take oh. it. So okay, let me do generate it too. Yeah, do it again. So now it has the verse and the chorus. Wow. All right, there we're now. But you notice that happened within seconds. What's I mean, the carbon it's impact? Fairly <laughs> good. <laughs> What's the carbon footprint? That was like one. Yeah. Global we, private we probably, jet. Yeah, I mean, seriously, I, we're... <laughs> this is one polar bear who has yeah. no yeah. home. Sorry, polar yeah, we bear. We just killed one polar bear. Yeah. That last iceberg just melted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sucks to suck, polar bear. Sorry. Uh, here we go. Here's the lyric. Oh, this is a more side ago. Yeah. The we navigate these treacherous waters, trying to read between the lines. But sometimes it's hard to discern what's real and what's a lie. Call it a web of skepticism, questioning with the weary side. There's a dance of remarkable claims that dazzle and deceive. But we must not be swayed by their illusions, it's time to disbelieve. For every theory that's put I mean, forward, so, you know, that's George is having a job. Unmasking logical fallacies are skepticism. How that video? I'm out of it. Shattered logic breaking through the veil of smoke and mirrors. He said strong inside us, it's skepticism. Good. What is this kind of good? For the quest for truth, we embrace the power of reason. In this world of uncertainty, science is our guide. We go. Wow. It has it's kind of a bad. What, like, why, not why? bad. That is not, not bad. bad. It's I mean, not the music's bad. a little 
It's so, a little cheesy, though. It's, yeah. Little cheesy. Think if, if we saw this I'm 10 years ago, this would have blown oh, yeah. us away. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. blown us away. Yeah. Even still, it's pretty good. It has kind of a like opening sequence for Captain Planet feel, yeah. but for you guys, like just play it at the mm-hmm. opening of uh, the but next Imagine show. if you do like this, like 20 iterations, you might get a version that's like, whoa, right. that's, you know, that really stands out. Yeah. Uh, we, we should do this for next week. Yes. Uh-huh. And then oh, put yeah. it in the show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Put some real time into it. Come up with some, you know, to oh, get, get, iterate some Ooh, good lyrics. Competition between you guys. Who can oh, make the gosh. best? I don't have time for that now. Can this Come on. It took 15? 15 seconds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I want to, like like any of these AI things, there's there's the quickie version. Then there's like, I spent a couple hours right. yeah, iterating it version. You can pay for it, like with uh, <clears> hey, access and whatever you know. I don't so pay for my version. AI. Let's just see what this is. They make it. Very excited to tell this one. The lyrics are the same. It'll just change. It's the world of hot and truth. Facts and fiction intertwined. We never gave these treacherous for the shine to read between the lights. Shattered logic break it through the veil of smoke and mirrors. It's that strong sign with the skepticism. Yeah, I mean, you know, so it's got a lot. Did you select <laughs> yeah. a particular voice? I feel like it's no. the same fake dude. That's true. Yeah. I think, you know, because of AI is like just stealing actual creative, yeah. you know what I mean? It's probably taking one <laughs> or a couple Zydeco artists yes. and it's wow. being like, okay, it's like a dude, you know, like that, that's typical. You should write a barbershop yeah. quartet one. That would be You can do any kind of crazy stuff too. Like wow. I've, I've seen people play with this and just like put in absurd things and it, it spits it yeah. out. One thing is that it does, and this is probably at the discretion of the website, not allow you to put in an artist's name. Yeah. Specific. Mm. Probably because of Yeah, you know, well, because yeah. they own their sense. own Right. Yeah, this so is, can't say this is Taylor Swift. But if you think about like the use cases, like for this, it's like I mean, TV shows, reality shows will probably use this shit, right? Like, I yeah, mean, how many musicians are going to get hired for like? Well, that's yeah, that's the you know I mean? the, the fear, and it's already happening at the yeah. low end. Yeah, like this is going to destroy the sort of the the, the derivative low end art yeah. and yeah. and whatever. Um, Cause yeah, cause you know, and I, and you know, that we, we have been part of that ourselves and there, you know, used to be a time where we would, there was this like a- online app where like for five bucks, you can have somebody in India draw you a picture or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who the hell would do that anymore? You do a freaking in mid journey. Like, like why would you do that? Or yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The fiber. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of oh, low, end, low end, low <laughs> end. Yeah. So same thing here. I know, like, and somebody used it to like make Gosh. a book cover for their book, and you know, whatever. Like, you could. There's yeah. There's so many applications. I, I only use it for non-commercial things. I basically yeah. use it for D and D. Where it's Steve, probably I, fantastic. Where Steve, it's like, I see you posted one on for one of your neurological neurological articles. Um, I frequently I frequently use it for my blogs because there's no there's no copyright issue. Yeah. Right. right. That's a good reason, I think, too. Like somebody said, YouTubers would use it for like background music when you want something very specific. Yeah. Like, yeah, there are things that exist for that, but sometimes it is hard to search through 10,000 songs to find what you want. Yep. Oh, yeah. I spend a lot of time on the like public use, like image searches and images in there. I like, I'm. I need to have a picture on every block, right? You just, yeah. It's something you just need to have. It increases engagement, of it, whatever. It's just like the yeah. bare minimum. And sometimes, like, like I want a picture of a lion. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's all I need. Fighting a, a person. Photograph yeah. of a lion yeah. for this blog, it would be fine. And I could find one online, but it's going to be copyrighted. Yeah. And then I just have to hope that nobody cares. But I could just have Midjourney make me a copyright free picture of a lion that's perfect. Yeah. With zero well, copyright. Spell letters. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. And I don't need anything fancy. I just need a freaking lion, you know what I mean? Or whatever, you Not know? Lion. So, and but it also helps you get to that one layer more specific. Like, I want a lion mm-hmm. that's blue or whatever. It's like, mm-hmm. like, for some reason, you might want two elements together that would be really hard to find online. Right. But really easy to make with an AI art program. Yeah. So for that kind of thing, it's fantastic. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. 
There was yeah. that meme that was going around that was like, I, I hoped AI would come around and solve, you know, ALS and cancer and space travel, but instead it seems to only want to be screenwriters and musicians. False yeah. dichotomy. <laughs> it's doing both. It's, it's a false dichotomy. Both. That's yep. right. Yep. So somebody brought that up on the Wednesday live chat last week. They're like, isn't AI only be like, isn't like frivolous AI only be used being used for frivolous things? It's like, yeah, you're, yeah. as you said, Frivolous, frivolous AI is being used for frivolous things. Right. But AI is already massively speeding up right. research. Drug research. It's already Stuff. being used as another layer of uh, uh, of quality control for like reading x-rays. You know what I mean? Diagnostic tool. Oh my Diagnostic God. tool. I mean, it's, performing people. yes, it is going to cure cancer and space travel, all that stuff. Yeah. That Obviously, that, that's going right. to take time. But yeah. it is doing all of that. Right. And we get to have funky music and cheap. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Right. Because that's what we're seeing. Not? Yeah. Not sure. A lot of user interfaces for the cancer diagnostic. Yes, AI. right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. But right. I'm telling you, I'm you know, again, as somebody who reads 100 news, uh, at least the abstracts of 100 news items a week, you know, prepping for the show, the number of items where that are about AI or where AI was used in the research is just becoming almost wow. universal. I yeah. mean, it's... It is absolutely amazing. And scientific articles or news articles or like both? Both. You know, these are like these are these are press releases for a published study. Like, and it's always like scientists used AI in order to analyze this. Like it's yeah. it's happening. It's why already transforming you? scientific right. discovery. Why yeah. if you have this tool, why wouldn't you use it? Yeah. Months we did it in an afternoon, you know. Yeah, it, it's the idea that it's don't, yeah. don't be fooled. It's not just being used. Right. It's a, not a. It's a false dichotomy. Yeah, yeah it's everywhere. Yeah, for serious, it's it is going to change the world. You know, in a lot of ways. Change the world. It is. Yeah. I've read. I've read. You, you know, you probably know more about this than I do, Andrew. But maybe when you're on sometime in the future, you could talk about this. Like, yeah, this question of using AI basically to make the government function. Yeah. You know. Yep. Because it's good at big but stuff. It ain't like functioning that. now. <laughs> right. Right. I would happily bring in the robots. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I would have that funky oh music in Congress. That would improve things. I, I would certainly be better than some congressmen we yep. have right now. Yep, yep, absolutely. All right, I think this is a good time to call it. We're all, all right. Yeah, that's, that's Happy good. Friday. Time to go back to work. Friday. Thanks for joining Bye -bye. us, Andrea. Thanks for having me. Great Thanks, to Andrea. Well. Good to see you. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks, Ian. Bye, no everyone. Have a good weekend. We'll see you. I think on Wednesday, right. next Wednesday, we should be going see live you next again. Next Wednesday. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, and there. here too. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. So bye -bye. long. Skeptic's Guide to the Universe is produced by SGU Productions, dedicated to promoting science and critical thinking. For more information, visit us at theskepticsguide.org. Send your questions to info at theskepticsguide.org. And if you would like to support the show and all the work that we do, go to patreon.com slash skepticsguide and consider becoming a patron and becoming part of the SGU community. Our listeners and supporters are what make SGU possible. All right. Big round of applause for the warm up act. Can we please, please, everyone? Nice. That was great. Very that was good. fantastic. Thanks for warming up that crowd, Steve and, and group. Now it's on to the main course. The meat. The meat. Ian. The and meat. Actually, myself. I have something to show about that, but we, oh, we, let's, we, go. We'll, let's, uh, okay. We'll do it real quick. Okay, everybody? Real quick. Food guesser. Here we go. Oh, here we go. It's the daily. Let's go. All right. Guess the food. Uh, oh. That's that's uh, wait, wait, there's several foods. There's se uh, there are oh, several foods. Ground pork, fish sauce, garlic, shallots, sugar, black pepper and eggs. Are we Jack saying this has a dish has a name? Like it's, the, the dish has a name but specifically what country is it from? Um hmm well uh, anybody, anybody in the chat? I don't know what that looks like. I mean it's got tomatoes and cucumbers on top of it. It doesn't say yet until we start 
uh, or doesn't say the name of the with food an just English yet. flair, but also a Vietnamese. Eastern. Well, it says fish sauce, so the fish sauce thing kind of tells me it's probably like Southeast Asian, right? I would think, Philippines, yeah, Thailand. Yeah. We're thinking, okay, Vietnamese. How about it? I'm gonna say Vietnam. Awesome. Oh my gosh! And there it is. First try. Cha Trung. I don't know how to uh, pronounce that, but it's a know popular either. Vietnamese dish made from minced pork and eggs. Chat, very smart. Nice. Very smart chat. Ooh. Here we go. Next one. 5,000 points for that. Next one. 5,000. Oh, corn Chicken. chowder. Corn cob, potatoes. Guas gas. I don't know what that is. This is Papers. from S Central America, probably, okay. probably Avocado, Mexico. Could be Guatemala, but Mexico. I'll say Mexico. Guas gas is like a plant. Is some dehydrated herb. What is it? Mexico? What is it? Mexico? That's my guess. Oh, oh we're warm. Oh, but... we're warm, and it's south of Mexico. Yeah, it... I... Where is there? Nicaragua, El Salvador, Peru? Belize. Belize. Yeah, I don't know. If it's I don't Peruvian. think it's South American. It's Brazil. I think it's nope. still north of the equator. North of the equator. Okay, so then. Oh, it says warm in Brazil, huh? Okay, look, this is Ahiaco. Ahi. Ahiaco, so a Spanish speaking country, probably, because ahi is pepper, I right. think. So Guatemala or El Salvador, something like okay, that. So let's go El Salvador. Mm, Still no. warm. Guatemala. Mm, no. Still we're warm. Still Antarctica, somebody yeah. says. Honduras. We're running out of we're we're running out of Central America. We're not America. hot though. No. What's between Mexico? Okay, Brazil. All that's warm. So, so where I don't know we? what the scale is. Warm how warm is just like locationally, we're like close to it. Okay, but how close? How I mean, we'll get a hot indicator if we're on the border of it. <laughs> oh, then we have to then we do have to go into South America. You have to go probably. South America, I think yeah. it is something like that. So I mean it could be Chile. 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 It doesn't you, look like Chile. Chile is very meat forward, right? So yeah. like uh but uh England. <laughs> England yeah let's go Panama uh, so. that's fun oh oh it was Peru what Colombia Cuba and Peru oh, Cuba I've never had this Peruvian dish crazy. and my wife's family is Peruvian so I don't even know I don't especially popular in where's Colombia. the protein yeah I mean it's a why well, no, it's there's chicken in it. It's like a chicken. Oh, there is. Oh, Ooh. chicken. Yes, of course. I mean, that might be what. Reason nah. why I ever had it. Okay, last one. All right, all right, last one. Three of three. Okay, those, those look like mm, horse meatballs. This looks like <laughs> or ground, something like you know, ground like beef. Okay, breadcrumbs. Beaten. You know, it's ground beef, breadcrumbs, egg, onion, capers, anchovy paste, lemon juice, flour, butter, beef, beef Oof. broth, and heavy cream. That's I mean, gotta be England. You know, listen to the chat. We said Peru and Colombia like that. I, there, you said a lot of things, okay? Thirty times. Ha! Sweden. I think it's Sweden too. Swedish no, meat warm. Meat. Warm. This dish is made by combining ground meat with onions, eggs, breadcrumbs, spices to form meatballs. The meatballs are simmered in broth, vinegar, and seasonings until cooked through. A creamy sauce is made by thickening the broth with flour and adding capers. For flavor, the meatballs are then served in the sauce traditionally accompanied by potatoes. accompanied by potatoes or rice. Of it, Ook, Ooky? I mean, ground beef. So, ground beef. what do you think? Uh, yeah, where is a beefy, a beefy uh, land? Andorra. <laughs> yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Liechtenstein. Um, Liechtenstein. I don't know. Swiss, uh, Latvia, Monaco, uh, Macedonia. Somewhere in con continental Europe. But where I don't know. That well, or like German. German, you think, or uh, area? We have France. We have well, that's a lot of guys. We're all out here. Sweden before now. We're still kind of still kind England. Of, it's got to be south of there. Uh, Lithuania. Oh, you think it's Eastern European? I mean, EU. Just put Poland. EU. I'll put EU. We're we gonna say Poland. Okay, try Poland. Okay, let's go Poland. Hot. Ooh, Ooh, we are on the border of Poland. Wait a minute. So that would be uh, like Belarus. Minute. It would be Ukraine. Oh, it could be Ukraine. Okay, let's do Ukraine. Shout out to the Ukraine. Oh, oh no, nope. warm. We're in the wrong no, direction. So wrong it's Germ It's probably Germany. You think Germany? Uh, if, if according to the Germany here. Uh, there very good. Germany and Russia. Nobody said Russia in the chat. Not a single person. No, Russia's kind of you know. Yeah. 
you know, they're on the outs these days. They're, they're, yeah, they're, 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 not ugh. not the friendliest. We're not. Yeah, I don't want right none of their now. meatballs or potatoes. Thank you so much. That's right. It is the Konigsberg's Klopsen. It's a traditional German dish. Now I'm hungry. Konigsberg. But I have to go to work. So, I mean, yeah, you oh, made me so hungry going to work. I apologize. So, so that problem. is that. I said Russia. Okay, Marty, you said Russia. And Sublimol, you said Russia. Okay, fine. <laughs> it's a fun game. Russia. Yeah, that's a fun little food guessing game. Anyway, that, that that's all I had. And uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Anything else, Evan, you want to say about the taxes? Uh, just that, you know, I've got to head back to work, so I really can't chat for all too long tonight. Um, we've got the um, – we're, we're two weeks away from being in Dallas. Oh, my gosh. I forgot to put the thousandth private show – thing i meant oh to do this gosh. well right at the end the thousandth private show in chicago uh, the it? private show link here. just dropped here. Uh, earlier this week so click on that there. that will be the thousandth show will be recorded that weekend and then released no matter when like the thousandth show happens i, I don't even know and but that'll be the one i having been there for about 990 of those shows mm -hmm. just about I would say that I'm not bored. I mean, it's right. It's you would Still think after, after doing this for not for 19 going into 20 years of doing this, mm -hmm. a thousand shows and everything that it would kind of get, you know, maybe stale in some way. I, I don't sense that at all. Yeah. I feel like we still have not even tapped into our potential. True. If you can believe that. And uh, there are still audiences out there to capture that I still don't know why we haven't captured them, but um, definitely there's there's growth, mm -hmm. which uh, you know after 20 years that it's pretty good. Not I don't think you can always say that, but I I see I see a brighter future even. Yeah. Yes, Evan is busy with tax season. I'm very busy with tax. I'm <laughs> heading back to my office tonight. Right I will now. be working there for the next five hours probably before. Before my my mind will start to uh, um, play <laughs> on tricks on down. me, and then I have to right. walk away. That, that, I I go until like twos become sevens and like you know <laughs> nines become fours, and I, then then I'm just doing myself a disservice, and I have sure. to fix all my work the next morning when I wake up. Um, so I, I I I know when I can go and when I, have, when I have yep. to stop, my brain will stop function go right, right up until April fifteenth. How many I shows have I missed? Yeah, uh, have I? Um, I miss maybe on average one a year mm -hmm. on average. So it was, I've left, I've missed 15, 20 episodes at most, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Uh, Steve, yeah. We bad. Steve's the only one who's been on every show. That's He's true. the only one. He's the only one. All of us. They do Wednesday. Oh yeah. We do Wednesday. TikTok. Uh, we would go live, but now we're also going live YouTube, Facebook and Twitch on Wednesdays. So that usually happens around like noon uh, Eastern. And thank you, Zeno. It's very kind mm -hmm. of you to say that the world needs us when's now more than ever. Show? When's the Toronto part, show? Yeah, we don't part. we don't know. We haven't uh, looked into Toronto yet, but that is something that we're looking. I would into. love Canada to do a show in Toronto. Absolutely yes. love it. Absolutely one of the cities I I, I want to go to. Although we're also thinking of Quebec or any of the Montreal. Places, Absolutely, you know what I mean. Any Quebec would be nice. Montreal. Even Saskatoon. Anyone Ooh, from Saskatoon? Saskatoon, shout out. No, but uh, really, what's coming up right now is Dallas. And, um, oh, my gosh. Um, mm -hmm. there, it's going to be just an incredible weekend. What's going to be challenging for me is I have to turn off my tax brain for four days and then yes. turn it and then turn it, switch right. it right back on. Uh, but that's what the flight will be for. I'll make my I'll make my change uh, during the flight down and the, and the flight back. But I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm staying hard at work so I can keep up with my schedule to allow me to do this. So all my effort is is going into making sure that Dallas is going to be an incredible experience for us all. And I hope to see some of you at least there. Um, can't wait. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I I all every week I post in the Discord. Okay, that we go live on Wednesday. Thank you so much. So you guys <laughs> use my notifications. That would be nice. um, but also I will post the actual link because I haven't done that as of yet for youtube we just started doing the uh TikTok not being just TikTok live so now we're we'll post that there uh for anybody who wants the thousandth mm -hmm. private show who's listening and is not watching this you can go to the skepticsguy.org slash events or it's 1000.eventbrite.com mm -hmm. i think and you can like 1000 the number 
one zero zero zero. Uh, so you could just go there for the that's the Chicago show. There's still some seats for the Dallas show. There's two private shows. We do a 12 p.m. one now and a 5 p.m. If you want to move from the 5 p.m. to the 12 p.m., contact Jay. Because uh, mm -hmm. there's still more seats, but they're starting to fill up too. So these are going to be full shows, including Extravaganza, which is like 400, 500, almost 500 people, I think, showing up to the Extravaganza, which is one of our, it's probably our biggest show. So that should this be will be the largest show. Extravaganza we've uh, we've ever performed. Our largest right. Extravaganza audience, certainly. So check it out. Uh, that's awesome. I think it. Yeah, I'm, that's it. I'm gonna I'm call gonna it. Go take a bath. Oh, good for you. Finally. Not really. I guess we got a big <laughs> baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Everybody Hopefully else. Hopefully next week. I'm going to try to be here next Friday if possible. We'll see. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Be well.